Now I'm gonna get started with my graphics designs, make it nice and quick for you guys. We only have about 40 minutes, and we got four of the top best, in my opinion, sharing with you guys all we know, and we're gonna make it nice and quick. One, one thing, how I'm gonna get started is pretty much start off with my gold FX trimmers. It's a T blade. Now, because it's a T blade, using that corner itself is gonna make it really easy for me to start creating these circle motion shapes that I wanna do. And hopefully, once it comes back around, you guys get to see what I'm doing, and I'm gonna definitely throw some color enhancement, make the color pop, and I hope you guys enjoy it, all right? Ready? Let's do it. Hey. Hell yeah, I can't see what you do. Um, so we're gonna be doing a really tight transition. I'm gonna go and do a skin fade into this long hair. And I'm gonna talk a little bit a lot about the tools, because I think sometimes too, um, as stylists, like we don't really have a lot of information on what kind of tools are out there. So I want to cover a lot of the foundation stuff that has helped me along the way. It's your turn, Frank. What are we doing today? <laughs> I'm going to start in my base by Burst Fade. All right, Burst Fade is a, a fade that basically was created, I would think, in the south of France. That's what they called it, was the south of France. Uh, the only thing that changes here is your line of demarcation. Usually placement is where the fade is based off of. So for one finger would be low fade, two fingers would be mid fade, three fingers would be high fade. In this case, it's circling around the ear. I'm gonna ball that out and then I'm gonna start my transition to the top. I like that. So real quick guys, what I do like about this segment that we got going on, you guys get to see a lot of different techniques. Uh, one good technique that I'm gonna show you guys is obviously working on time. We got about 38 minutes right now, but I wanna walk you guys through this fade, but also letting you guys see how to really space out your time and make sure that you're fitting in everything in and making sure that you're working good on your time. So right now I'm using my flash FX and I'm making sure that I create my guideline. As I create my guideline, I'm making sure when I get up to my stopping point, I'm always making sure that I'm flicking up like this, creating that C-scoop motion. The reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna make sure that when I come up to my stopping point, I'm creating soft guidelines, not hard ones. Hard ones are created just like this, or when you come up and you're just leaving that hair right there. So we always wanna make sure that we're creating soft guidelines. Most deaf, most deaf. So if you guys take a look over here, we get the camera shining on this way. A lot of the key points to creating designs, a lot of people can easily raise their hand and say, I'm not artistic, right? But I guarantee if I gave everybody this pair of trimmers, right, and I told you guys to flip it upside down, just similar to a pencil or a writing utensil, using that corner of the blade, if I told you guys that was a pen or any type of writing utensil, and I told you guys to sit there and sign your name for me, you guys would probably give me some incredible signatures, right? Because you guys been doing that for so long, you guys had the time and ability to finesse it. That's how we create these type of shapes. A lot of inspiration comes from, believe it or not, uh, numbers and alphabet letters, right? If you think about it, let's say we grab a number two. Anybody, everybody here should know how to draw a number two. We grab a number two, we slightly tilt that to the left. Then we grab a letter W, connect that to the number two, and slightly tilt that to the right. Just like that, we can create a simple design. You add a border around it. You could even add another letter or number on top of that. That's how we get created. Using these gold FX, because it's a T-blade, which is very important when, one, not just shaping up um, around the forehead area, but simply around the ear or clear, uh, cleaning up the neck area, the T-blade makes it that much easier to focus by pulling the ear down with one hand and using that corner to simpl simplify it and pivoting to create that nice, clean lineup that we all like. But back to the design, as you can see, I started off with a simple swirl. You could keep using designs, things that you guys are familiar with, hearts, zigzags, the letter Z, the letter W, things like that, things that we're all familiar with and just creating your own form of art. What do you guys think of so, uh, what this looks like so far? Pretty clean? Not so bad, right? Cricket, so, oh, man, I got scared for a minute. Like, oh. But as you come back, it'll, definitely get better and at the very end we're gonna throw some enhancements on it and I hope you guys enjoy it. That's awesome I can't wait to see it. So what I've done so far is a lot of times we wonder I think for me like learning how to fade was probably one of the hardest things I had to kind of learn on my own um, is that sometimes in beauty school we didn't never went as short as skin right you probably went like a two or a one so Understanding of just where things begin and end made a huge difference um, in, in, the, in the way that it would turn out. So when I'm working with really long hair and I'm trying to transition that really tightness, because some people want that contrast, they want that darkness. So what I've done here is learning how to control everything 
with my comb using clipper over comb. And what it allows me to do, this is a carbon comb that I really like using, is that it allows me to pull everything out at once and knowing where exactly I need to cut, not having to use the entire thing. And this helps me transition everything in. So once I build my top shape, I build from the bottom with the skin line because that's gonna be your hardest part to blend out. That super skin like shaver line or razor line is gonna be the hardest one to blend out. And once I have this, it's almost like you're setting a boundary line of like, hey, this is where I want it to end. Versus like when we start from the bottom and we just work up, sometimes you start chasing those lines up, right? And it goes higher and higher. So in this way, it allows me to make sure I keep everything low if that's what they wanted. And so as I go through this process here, so I use the one clipper over comb and I always put the extra guard because that acts as a cushion. So I could always take more off if I need to, right? So going step by step, I take really, really small increments and I create this boundary line. And as you can see right here, I've created a blending zone. This really soft edge here is telling me don't go beyond this point. And now I'm gonna re-blend everything back down and then apply the same, the next guard, which is a half guard. I'm gonna do the same thing until that whole area blends all the way completely up. And it becomes super repetitive. And it's really great tool that I really like using is our gold FX. We also ha now have it in silver as well. But what's really great about this is that you have locking detents on the side. So what it is is that it actually sits in each little pocket. So you always know where you're at versus like a lot of the free floating ones that most people have seen as we're learning how to cut hair. We don't remember if we were halfway, quarter of the way. It gets a little confusing. So having something like this has helped me a lot, kind of like keep everything organized and structured. I agree so much with that, so because this is just like honestly going into a fade. I don't care how advanced you are, how long you've been cutting, even still to this day, you know, I go back to this clipper, my gold FX, and I'm counting my steps on the side to make sure that my fade is coming out even on both sides. Sometimes we can walk around the whole fade and be doing the whole haircut, and we end up losing our steps because, once again, you might be working with something that's a free lever, and you're not for sure exactly where it was placed at. So that's just a key, and I'm quite sure, Frank, you do the same thing, right? Same exact thing. Actually, right now, uh, what you see me doing is I'm doing a, a line a part in her hair and something very important that I like to share when doing parts is the simple fact that when we go into looking at parts I don't know a lot of stylists how many stylists do we have here by show of hands barbers okay so for the stylist that can't use a razor and still wants a nice clean part it's very important that when you actually do the part you go in one way right? as you can see this is where we would mark our line right but also doing it the opposite way, what that happens, what happens is, is not only does the part clean on the top portion of the hair, but also on the bottom. So you see how nice that separation is without using a blade. On this side, and I left that so you can see, I've created a navigation through the haircut using open, right? So level, level adjustment open, just to touch on the clipper real quick. The cutting blade, when that cutting blade is down, it's giving me a longer length cut a longer length of graduation. When I cook, when I put it all the way up, the cutting blade goes all the way up, it's shorter, it's closer to the skin. That's what I got the, the baldness from. So level adjustment open, about a quarter of an inch section. I did a 0.5, quarter of an inch section, and a one and a half. What that allows me to do is it allows me to see that I have a beginning point and I also have an end point. So I don't want to go no higher than this. So for the gentleman that's also sitting in your chair, they get a comb over or a pompadour and you want it to lay into place and it's kind of there's a disconnection, try to let this stuff grow by doing that one and a half flicking out and then create your blend. Awesome. So if you take a look over here, I'm about 85% done with the entire design. Pay attention, every time we do any type of work on females, I actually like to keep it soft, round shapes. I don't like anything too straight, too sharp, too masculine. So the key point in doing this is not just doing lines with being bald. For example, a lot of people start creating designs thinking it would be like writing with a pen and a paper. One line. You have to focus on both negative and positive. Think of photography. When they have these, photo uh, these negative photos that are black and white, you have both dark lines and you also have both uh, white lines. For example, I started off the design using a negative, which I'm assuming is the white. I might have it mixed, confused, might not. But let's just say the white right here, right? We started off with a single swirl that let off 
which is bald, right? In other words, that same swirl could be started from the beginning, creating a simple zigzag into a swirl, but now we added the positive, which is our what? Black lines, which are these guys. It's simply just a border, this little black line right here that borders, that's gonna border all around and ends with a black line. So mixing both negative and positive lines is a great way to combine great uh, pieces of art. Like I did mention, using uh, round shapes are very helpful. Another thing that I love to talk about is every time we travel and we go to different hotels, as soon as you walk out of here and you start paying attention to the carpet of the convention center, pay attention to the carpet in the elevator, pay attention to the carpet in your hallways, you're going to start seeing all types of crazy designs. And one thing I do is just stare at the floor and get inspiration from everything and everyone that I see. So far, so good. How's it looking? Look hot? Awesome. No, boy. I don't know how you do designs. I can't, you can't, can't even do a I heard you say you're going to do a simple design. Was that, that was earlier, oh, right? No, no, no. That was, uh, that was oh. just a straight line. <laughs> I can't do curves. Um, I always give a lot of credit to these guys that can do that because it's almost like once you put in those lines that like, you can't undo it, you know? So would you, you practice on paper or did you already were artistic? Me? Yeah. Oh, uh, dude, uh, er uh, trial and error. I had clients where I would finish the design and be like, how's it look? And I'm like, oh, it looks awesome. And then I just wouldn't even bother to show them the mirror. And they just thought it was weird. Like, hey, can I get to see it? And I'm like, oh, like it really hurt. But it just, honestly, trial and error. You do it over and over until you start to feel right. At this point, I no longer freestyle. I already have certain shapes that I have already in mind from years and years of doing it. And it's just how I collab them together. That's dope. And I, that was kind of the first things I started seeing in barbershops. When I first started cutting hair, there wasn't a lot of even girls that were coming in yet. But then I started seeing all the different undercuts and all the different designs. And I'm sure you still get those a lot, right? Um, when you're doing design work, is like oh, yeah. undercuts. All right. So now that I'm going and moving through, you can kind of see it already transitioning into where if he wants to keep this length and have it like a flow back kind of look, then I'm able to kind of meet that even though it's a really long area is using the comb to kind of guide me in creating this little shape right here and then as I move through the back this is where I kind of just cleaned up the neck to keep it a little bit more cleaned up but still really long is to always have um, this shape kind of framed out and I just use my trimmer and I just kind of etch a little bit at a time because sometimes, too, it's like if we just kind of wing it and go full on, sometimes we might take off too much and the back becomes too narrow or too wide. So I like to use just the corners to kind of guide me, almost like a, like a pencil etch at first. Everything is really soft for the first pass, and then I'll go back in and make it a little bit more dominant. So now I'm just finishing my transition, my fade on this side, and I've been able to do that because I put in my first guidelines. See what that looks like over here. Looking nice. How's it looking? Looking all right so far? I, yeah. no edge. I, I was able to create that just following my point of reference, which is my line of demarcation. It's very important that if you're doing a drop fade, and what I mean by a drop fade, it usually comes from the corner of the ear and then drops underneath the occipital, that you go and you flow with, okay, that line of demarcation. That is your foundational structure guideline. You have to do it in a fade like this that goes over the ear. I have to do a lot of corner blending, which is when I'm taking my corner and I'm actually doing it in that direction because even though it's in a circular motion, if I went straight vertical on this, I would mess up that whole flow of the fade. I'm gonna touch on some corners, right, edging, right? When I do my edging and you wanna come up with a nice circular motion on the ear, you wanna go ahead and this is the way I do it. I put my trimmer flat on the head and I go straight up first. All right, I like creating point of references. So I'm gonna go in there, do that. That allows me to know where I'm going. I'm gonna come over here at the temple peak point, mark my line here. All right, once I have that there, you can already see where I'm gonna do that little C-scope motion. You see that? All right, what happens is, is that we start off at the top and then we end up coming in way too much. And then it's got regrowth and that looks bad, all right? Or if not, we start from the bottom and then we go up and we might eat, uh, eat up too much into that. So creating points of references like on the top and then over here and then just connecting the dots to create a nice ski scope motion.
That's C scope motion, man. I, I feel like, honestly, Frank is one of the most important keys when it comes to fading. Once again, guys, we're talking about with time, how I brought up to you earlier, making sure that you're watching your time and watching how your time is spent. I just pretty much faded this pretty quickly, going all the way around. I know it's certain areas that I can go back in and clean up, and that's perfectly fine. Some things with sometimes as stylists and barbers is what we do when we're cutting hair. We get into a haircut and we try to make it look perfect the first time around. And when you do that, you might look at your clock and you're like, damn, I done spent 30 minutes just trying to make it look perfect and you haven't even shaped anything up yet. So I stress it out so much to barbers and stylists. Always make sure, put the foundation down. Go into it, shape it up, style it on the top, do whatever else you got to do to the haircut, and then jump back in and do your detail work. When you do the, your detail work, that's going to help you get those small little points that you can go back and see, make it look real clean, make it look real polished, and put your signature on it. 100%. So when, I, when I'm doing, I'm currently using a straight razor, but if you guys are not allowed to use it, refuse to use a straight razor, as you can see from the very beginning and overall design, our trimmers are all zero gap compatible, right? They all come with this little device that allows you to make it user friendly to zero gap. If you're not familiar with what zero gap is, pretty much is the ability to get you clean lines, not my watch or sleeve, the clean lines just using the trimmer itself. Now, barbers, on the other hand, or anybody else who's licensed to use a straight razor, it's always ideal to go over with the straight razor, clean up certain lines. And not only that, as you can see in the, on the screen, how you can still see the dark of the short, the short little hair, the little dark spots, the razor will pretty much clean that up. But like I mentioned earlier, all our trimmers are zero gap compatible, still allowing you to give such clean, beautiful lines. And um, what I'm gonna do is, now that I'm done with the trimmer, all I'm doing is using a straight razor. And for those of you that do use a straight razor, the only thing that I like to use is water. The reason why, these blades are extremely sharp. If you've never used a blade before, understand that it's extremely sharp. So water alone, applying it on your hand and just slowly right over the area you want to cover on, water alone is going to be enough. Trust me. Let the blade do the work. Don't apply too much pressure. The best way to go about utilizing a straight razor is to think of a sweeping motion. You never want to, if we get a zoom in on my hand, can we get a zoom in on the hand? You never want to apply the blade straight on. You always want to tilt it in a 45 and think like you're sweeping hair off, right? Same concept. You guys want to learn? Never use a blade before in your life? Practice on your thigh. Why? Two hands are free. Hair on your thigh is very, very fine. It allows you to stretch the skin down while you go up. It allows you to stretch the skin up while you go down. And if you cut yourself, at least now you will understand the pressure it takes to cut yourself. And you'll probably be more confident cleaning somebody else up because skin and latex are completely different. So I'm not a big believer on blowing up a balloon, putting shaving cream on it, and shaving it. Would you agree with that, Frank? Because I, I can hand you Frank's beard and it won't feel the same. No, I actually do agree. I mean, it's a great practice to use a balloon mm -hmm. so you can get the motion of it. But actually stretching the skin and doing skin, like, like Los said, actually doing your thighs. I actually caught Los doing that this morning. <laughs> I still practice this till today. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie, how's your cut coming along? So I'm repeating everything that I just did through the other side. And this is the side where most of the hair flows on, so I usually like to separate right where this little corner of the recession point is, and that's usually my guide for where I would split the hair to make sure that I don't lose a lot of this width as I'm styling this back. Everything is still clip over comb, and all every motion that I'm doing is always in a C-scoop motion, because what that does is like, if we were to go with the head curve, sometimes you create new guidelines, right? So everything that I do, every single step, is C-scooped out because that way you're setting up that next guide to be a lot easier to blend out. And as I keep going, you see like my original guide was straight. Whether you're straight or whether it's curved, you want to follow that ex same exact guideline all the way up and then you'll see the consistency kind of happen as you go. So here I'm still with my number one guard. And it's always just super nice, again, just with the locking detents because I know exactly where I'm at. It's always accurate. It's always consistent. And it allows me to move without having to think about stuff. And that also kind of adds more to, like, your client experiences because then now you can focus more on just, like, building relationships with your customers. And it just makes the overall process so much more enjoying. And then another thing that's really important, too, is just, like, 
you know, at one point I thought fading was literally like one of the hardest things to learn. Like I used to do two hour haircuts, sweating because the guys were like fidgeting because they've been sitting for too long. And the only way to get better is that you have to keep cutting a lot. You know, like when I came from a salon doing like maybe like one or two, one or two every two weeks or so, like it's just not enough. Like, and once I jumped into a barbershop, we were doing at least like 10 to 15 a day. So if you add that up, like it's a lot of hours, but that's the only way it'll get more comfortable. And that's what it is. And Frank likes it. Um, I really like when you talk about the muscle memory stuff, you know, about the right hand, left hand. Can you explain that? Mm. You know, it, I, I it's hard. I, I love that. I, I, really I haven't said that. that all day. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. So what I usually say is with repetition, you get better, right? Well, that's anything in life. It don't matter what it is. When you do something over and over and over again, you are going to get better. Right? What happens is a lot of the times, even coming out of school, if there's anybody coming out of school, you go into a shop and you don't do the best of haircut and you go, this really is not for me. Or your style is transitioning into doing men's cuts and then when you actually go and you do it, it doesn't come out right. First time never comes out right. If you can remember back a long time ago when you rode your first bike, you didn't ride it the first time the correct way. You fell, it hurt. It's the same thing in this industry, right? So what she's talking about is, is I say, everybody, see, today I'm right-handed and I've always been right-handed. I cut with my right hand. If I were to try to do that line on her head with my left hand, it would almost be impossible. And I'm up here educating and I'm, and I'm trying to share stuff on how to do this and do that, but... In my left hand, I can't do it. Why? Because I don't have that muscle memory built up into it, which means I don't have that same time that I put into my right hand to do it. So if that's me, that can be you. The whole thing of the guy coming into the shop and now all of a sudden it's break time. All of a sudden, I got <laughs> somebody's processing. I can't take them right now. You're only affecting yourself. You're only going to grow if you continue to put more into yourself. I always say and I emphasize, mess up a lot of hair. Okay, my Facebook page is full of messed up haircuts. That's why you can't see any of them, right? <laughs> I'm just being honest, right? But you have to mess up hair in order to grow, and that's in anything in life. You have to fail in order to succeed. If you don't fail, you don't know what success is. Woo! Nice. That's some key stuff right there, Outreach. boy. <laughs> yeah. It kind of jumps in, man, where, like, just even about the finish that I was telling you guys about towards the end, I remember when I was in barber school, I had one of my instructors, he told me, he said, man, Hawk, you can cut hair real good, but you never finish any of your haircuts. And I'm like, what do you mean? They pay me, they pay y'all, they out the door, they like it. What do you mean I'll never finish? He never told me. I'm like, how the hell are you going to say something like that? Never tell me, you know, how I don't finish my haircuts. But what happened was he made me do some soul searching. He made me try to figure out myself on how am I not finishing off my haircuts? So as the years went by, I literally had to dig in and say, what areas can I fix? What areas can I dig in to really finish off a haircut? And what I was missing was, it was times where I was sending people out the door and I would look at these clients walking towards the door and I would see the haircut and I'd be like, damn, I forgot to fade that in a little bit more. Anybody ever did that? Not like hey, I could have cleaned that up a little bit better or I should have shaped that up a little bit better. So that's what was happening. And I'm like, well, why are you letting them leave the chair instead of fixing that before they get out? So once I started working on those small little pieces and actually spending a, a lot of my time just on my detail work, I said, hey, this is just like washing the car. If I go get my car washed right now, somebody do some detail work. The last thing that they're going to do, they're going to polish up their car. They're going to buff it down real good just to make sure that it has that signature look on there. So once again, guys, what I'm stressing to you is just always making sure that you're putting that signature on there and finding out what your signature is. How do you do that? You ask yourself, what are my strong points? Do I like to do the shape up? Do I like to do the fade? Do I like to do designs? And whatever your strong point is, really perfect it. Make it yours, and once you make it yours, you move on to the next thing, and that's how you put your signature on. Most deaf, most deaf. So I'm pretty much finishing it up. Now there's three levels to designs when it comes to me. There's clipper only or trimmer only design. Then there's blade work, which enhances and details the design, which is pretty much what we have here. There's people out there that are against color. They're against using enhancements. They feel like, oh, it's not real barbering. It's not this, it's not that. But let's take it back to when girls started first coloring their hair, 
right? When, when girls started wearing makeup, everything has to evolve and change. And somehow, some way, people want to stand out. So this could be at a regular barbershop, fully bladed and trimmer work. What do you guys think? Cool, right? Ooh. But I'm an artist. I don't just consider myself a barber or a stylist. I'm an artist. So because of that, I want to enhance this look. So it's not what I use to enhance. It's how I use to enhance. And by that, I mean a million people ask me, what is that you use? You can use anything you want. You want real color so it can last you forever. You want to use bleach so you can line it and then color it red. You want to use something that's going to wash right off on a little kid? Go ahead. But what I'm using is, is this color retouch by Rusk. The reason why, no mess, no gloves, and it washes right off. I don't have time to sit here and patch test every model I do. And it comes in a variety of colors, allowing me to pick whether she has really, really dark hair, dark brown, a lighter brown, uh, red hair, etc., etc. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick the darkest brown. And just like how you ladies will fill in your eyebrows to give it that illusion that the density is there that's exactly what we're gonna do and by the time it comes back to me you guys are gonna see how much more this design is gonna pop giving it that look as she's walking down the showroom floor that people are gonna turn around and be like whoa where did you go get that done and is that is that important i apply just a little bit of water so it become easier to apply but once it dries up it dries up in a powdery substance and makes it look completely natural so when you do take a picture it doesn't look wet so hopefully by the time it gets back to me i should be 100 percent done quick question los i got for you man talk to me Hulk. So when doing enhancements on your haircuts like this and especially when it comes to the designs do you feel like when your model or your client is out and about that that has picked up more clientele for you just because just that enhanced look caught their eye and it just made them you know it draw them into the haircut you know what um it did for a while for a long time but mm -hmm. for the last two years i haven't taken any new clients i only cut the people that i cut because right. i travel a lot so my clients get cocky now now when people ask them where they go get cut <laughs> they're like yeah my my barber is exclusive you can't go to him he don't take nobody so he speak for me and that helps but it does help they're walking billboards at the end of the day man they promote yep. your work i feel like it's like um how they do on TV. I mean, we look at TV, we look at TV all the time, man. They see, we see um, commercials. And Burger King, McDonald's, most restaurants, they have this enhanced looking burger that you'll never get at yep. McDonald's or Burger King. But <laughs> once you get there, it, I mean, it's still good quality. You still eat it. Not it it sure. only I'm looks sure like that at 4 a.m. Yeah. Right? It only at looks 4 like that. At 4 a.m., I swear, the burgers, McDonald's burgers are the best <laughs> at 4 a.m. But honestly, though, man, you know, we look at these enhancements that's put on TV and that's what draws us in. And it's the same thing with haircuts. We just really like to stress that the foundation is there. If you look what Los did, he made sure that the foundation of that haircut was placed down. I mean, if that washes out, she still has a good haircut at the end of the day. So exactly. that's what we try to stress because it is barbers. It is stylists that's out there that's using enhancements to cover up work if it's mess ups or just to put it on there because they know they can make it look good but once it washes out how is that foundation so remember place that foundation down good that way that person has a solid uh cut beautiful hawk for real and that just goes back into presentation you know that's going to be your stamp that's going to be your your image that you're going to use to market for new clients you know and that was what really helped me too because when I first started in the shop, like it was really hard to build a clientele because most of my coworkers were guys and they just looked at me. It was just like, mm, I'd rather go to any of these dudes, you know? <laughs> and so I needed to make sure that I had something to present. So it kind of helped me like, okay, if I can't get them in from just like talking to them and the, the last thing I really, really, really dread doing is trying to convince somebody like, hey, I got you. Yes, I know how to fade. Yes, I know how to do this. So I started building a better portfolio of work. So before they could even ask, it was just like, hey, here's this, check it out. And then when they were able to see it, it's like, oh, okay, I feel a little bit more comfortable versus me like dragging somebody to sit there. And every time I'm doing something, they're just like, oh, the worst. Right? They just keep turning, the, the, the cape gets loose, and you have to keep readjusting it. So <laughs> I just want to always put out my best work. And as you do that, it's crazy how many people come from different places to come get, your, come get services. Like, I get a lot of people now where they're all rotating, people that are traveling in. They're like, hey, like, I'm going to L.A. Like, let me try this place. Like, I really want to try. And it's just like 
you really don't know where it could take you. And that's why I really believe that presentation and what you put out is also bringing those things back into your shop, whether it's like all comb overs, different styles, like whatever you promote the most is what you're always gonna get the most. And when it comes to more like versatility stuff, like I remember too, doing haircuts, they're like, no, I want this and, and that exactly. But now over time, I've been showcasing more variety. So now if like people come in, they're like, you know, I don't really know, but like now I trust you. What, what, what do you think looks best? And I would try to deliver it in, a, in the most confident way possible versus I remember asking him like, hey, Let's do a taper just because I just saw it. So my tone is very slow and they're just like, mm, I don't know, I'm gonna, I, want, I want what I always get. But if I went in there and I'm like, dude, let's do a taper. Like you got this really nice jawline, it's gonna help you. It's gonna widen your head shape. Everything's gonna look more squared. And it's like your deliverance makes a huge difference. And that's something I had to learn through um, working in a barbershop because it was hard for me to gain their trust at first. It starts with your handshake. You know, if you go in there and you give them one of these, Frank, let me, let me the see limp, those handshakes. The limp. One of these. You know, like, they're going to they're gonna question everything you do from that point. Versus when you go in there and you give them a nice, good handshake, you got to show them, like, that you're in control, right? So once I got used to just, like, presenting and, like, studying haircuts, looking at different photos, like, we have a lot more options now where you can see it from your phone. Versus, like... Back in the day, you get those little books in the salon, those little coffee. They're like super outdated, right? And you and you pick from those. But now it's like they can bring a picture from Europe and give it to you, you know. And it's really cool to kind of use those as reference marks. So if I if there was a style that I couldn't do, like crops, crops are still kind of fresh and new for us. And even when I first started doing it, it was a little nerve wracking because I didn't really understand it. But I kept looking at different photos and tried to study those. And then you can eventually look at fades to where you can see exactly where someone's skin line starts, where that little half section is. And that allowed me to know, okay, when I'm doing his haircut, I'm gonna see where, that, where the bridge of his nose is and that's where I'm gonna start this part. And you're literally just mimicking different haircuts and as time goes on, you're gonna see the progression, especially on male clientele because they're gonna come back a lot faster than your women, right? So you get to see that growth happen and you'll and before you know it you'll just get better and better and it's always a really cool thing for me to like have photos to reference back that way you can see kind of how far you've kind of come you know sophie brings up presentation and that 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 brings me to bring up social media her presentation on social media is amazing i, I came across sophie's page what four years more five six five, years ago right six yeah it's been so long right and she was trying to build up clientele. What she actually built up was actually some followers as well because I followed her. I thought she was an amazing barber. Didn't look at her as a female barber. I was just like, wow, she's great. She was working at an old school vintage shop doing all these comb overs and stuff. And she set herself a look, right? Uh, I feel like, and Hawks talked about this on stage before, I feel like a lot of times, and now this is about you, we go and we're looking at so many social media followers and we're following people, but how much are you investing into yourself? You know, you have to take pictures of your haircuts. Does everybody take pictures of their haircuts here? Men's haircuts? How about the bad ones? You take pictures of the bad ones too? Those are the ones you need you to take pictures take them, of. You take them, but you don't post them. Yeah, those right? are the ones you, you need them. to take pictures of. Yeah. Those are the ones you need to take pictures of. Because those are the ones you need to study. Anybody that got an education goes, right? And they go to school and they end up studying for something and end up being successful. But if you're failing at something, that's where you got to embrace we can't. We gotta stop patting ourselves on each other and taking great pictures and then posting up for social media. Don't build followers. You'll build clients first, and then your clients will build followers. Are you with me? Okay. So take pictures of those mess ups haircuts. Look at where the weight lines at. Look at where it's not distributed right or where the graduation is not taking place, and then go in there. And when he comes in next time, you don't have to sit there and go, "Oh man, this guy again." I don't want to cut this oh, guy. I man. can't wait. To, I, I hate when he comes in. You can actually look forward to cutting his hair because you're going to go, I'm going to pass this, so I'm going to do some clipper over comb to actually try to better that. Take a second picture, and I guarantee you by your third picture, you'll see somewhat of an improvement. That's key stuff, man. Key stuff. So, guys, if you guys look over here, I'm just about done wrapping it up with the enhancement. Can you guys see the difference from what it looked like before the enhancement to what it looks like now? Amazing, bro. Is it? Now, it's still wet, it's still drying, but like I mentioned, once it completely dries, it literally turns into a very subtle substance type of form. It looks very, very natural. And the key to 
enhance any design for any barbers in the audience or hairstylists that already do some type of design is to not just outline the actual design, you also want to outline the perimeter. Because when you outline the perimeter, which is here, here, and all this bottom area that I'm still going to touch on, this is what brings the entire look together. This is what makes this rich and popped to match this nice, beautiful little natural fro she had going on. It all brings it together. It just doesn't look like the color, the design is colored, and that's the goal that we try to do because our goal, my goal, is to not just get the interest of hairstylists and barbers, but to get the interest of people that have no clue of what we do. For people to see that and be like, whoa, where did you go for that? Is that a tattoo? Because I've heard it all over and over. So as I continue to apply my color enhancement, you guys can zoom in, the type of brush that I use, let me put it on a white. You see how little that brush is? A lot of people that I see using in color brushes for enhancements, they use actual paint brushes. The problem with paint brushes is that because the brushes on a paint brush is about this big, whereas in mine is that much shorter. When you have a bristle that's this long and you try to target certain areas like this, what's gonna happen to the bristle when you try to apply that pressure? It's gonna fold, it's gonna fold in half. Being that this bristle is so, so short and compact, it allows me to really get in there and press on it. Just how you ladies would with the mascara underneath your, uh, above your eyes and all that. Same exact concept. How does it look so far? Does it look awesome? Damn really? Good. Dope. Thank you. It's not easy doing that in 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Real quick recap. I just want to go over pretty much I showed you guys on how to pretty much control your fade in a timely manner. We've got about four minutes left. I pretty much went in with my flash FX and created my guideline showing that I was going up like this to pretty much create that smooth transition, not creating any type of hard guidelines. Work my way up. So pretty much from a zero, a one to a one and a half to a two and working my way back down and do my detailed work. We put in a hard part on the side. This is his first time getting a hard part. How it look? Pretty good? Yeah. Pretty soft stuff. All right. What you got, Frank? I'm still styling the hair a little bit, but I went in and did the fade, all right, creating a GPS. All right, put in a half, uh, no guard, about a quarter of an inch section, half, and then one and a half to create my, where I'm going to have my shelf at, where I'm going to gradually work my way up to, then fading using a taper adjustment, all right? The gold FX allows us to see exactly where we're at. And then on this side, I simply just did a part. Right? So something easy so you can try. You don't have to go into too many crazy designs. I say before you go doing designs, work on your line work first. Because if you go into doing the, a, a whole big creative piece and you're not really good at line work, it's going to end up looking like mines, which is like a back of a cereal box and a little kid got lost, right? And there's all scribbles all over the place, right? So practice on your line work, something simple like this coming from the temple area, going back into a peak, right? And then all I did was create a fade going into it so it gives it the illusion of what it's at, the little peak in the back, and then end up Ving it over here in the back. How's the haircut look? Looking good? Awesome cut, bro. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the style, and I'll let uh, Sophie recap. Ah, uh, dope, dude. All right, so we got a little bit of a mix over here. Thank you. Um, we blended a super, super tight taper here. You see that little skin transition into the length. We used the comb. We connected the back and just did something a little different. Everything kind of comes to a point. And you can kind of do, like, just different cool stuff. And then we finished this on this side. How do you guys like it? Sweet. Amazing. All right, guys. So just like most chefs, when they serve you the most simplest dish and they finesse it, when they present it to you and they tell you how they cooked it and everything, I'm going to do a similar concept. I grabbed the number one. Why? Because the one, it's a lot easier to apply color, to go with my trimmers. A lot of people try to create dark shadows or contrast looks when it comes to design, so they use a two, even a three. Trimming it down to a one makes it easier also to apply the design. I use a lot of inspiration from numbers and alphabet letters and similar signs that I'm familiar with. Using negative and positive lines, bringing them all together is a key goal to creating a little simple stuff like this. And yeah, what do you guys think? Looks awesome. Thank you guys.